Hello everyone, uh, how are you all? I really welcome you all in this webinar. Uh, I know it's Ramadan, uh, you have been working and you have been you know, uh, doing the prayers and spending time with family, but you just take your time out to join this webinar, really appreciate this thing. Uh, let me introduce myself, I'm Taha Sajid. I'm uh, officially working in Huawei as a Fix specialist and also a digital lead, uh, looking after uh, the Volti solutions and also some solution with blockchain as a service BES. Uh, in addition, I'm an aggregated instructor of Blockchain Training Alliance uh, for their Solution Architect program. Uh, blockchain Training Alliance is a global education body uh, which is providing certification which are renowned globally. So you can check their website. And uh, in addition, I'm also associated with the local Saudi company ASTC Arabian for Science and Technology. Okay, uh, to provide to create awareness inside Saudi Arabia to give uh, good solutions uh, for the blockchain uh, to the local market and in Pakistan I recently got associated with Prudential Solutions to actually you know promote blockchains and uh, to create awareness and to give also the solutions. So why I choose this webinar is to actually uh, I see that there's a lot of confusion in the blockchain space uh, that people who actually knows blockchain are not you know able to you know qualify any use cases inside their organizations and also there was some sort of you know uh, some sort of misunderstanding between what blockchain is what database is uh, whether blockchain is a database or not and how they can address the GDPR challenges how they can talk to officials and um, if they want to, if they want to scale the blockchain, what sort of things they need to consider. So what I, what my plan is or what, uh, what I'm trying to, to do in this webinar is to give a complete overview picture to all the people in that they can, you know, easily understand in a simplified way what smart contracts, what blockchain is and how they can make a better use of it. And uh, uh, this is just... Uh, one of the things uh, we can we can you know uh, conduct a lot of session in the future. There's a good plans for the future also. So just keep in touch and follow me on LinkedIn and uh, just write me an email if you have any confusions or something. We'll be definitely in touch. Thank you. So in this webinar, I'm going to actually if you clarify all the misconceptions that you have with respect to blockchain and you know and, uh, and make it really simpler for you to explain. Okay. The objective of this webinar. Is to make sure that you can contribute and lead discussions among uh, inside your organization about blockchain or blockchain is then you can actually once you will once you will be able to understand one, what blockchain is then you can only evaluate solutions and qualify use cases for blockchain okay then you will be able to understand the comparison uh, between blockchain and database and value it which we are because there's a lot of confusion with respect to blockchain that whether it is database technology or what it is okay so i need to clear this confusion also for all Okay, and what sort of GDPR challenges it can address? Because uh, if you are scaling blockchain, or if you are talking uh, to some, uh, you're talking to some management or some regulatory bodies, you need to make sure that they understand that blockchain is complying with GDPR challenges. And in case if they need to scale it, they are safe to go with. Okay. Uh, then we'll talk about the different high-level architectures overview about the different blockchain platforms, which is Hackalaja Fabric, Ethereum, Archicoda. These all three back, uh, these all three blockchain platforms are being used uh, while addressing different challenges. Okay, with respect to public and private blockchain also. So we will clear that aspect also in this in this webinar. Uh, then we'll uh, then we'll understand that use case. That what are the use cases? What are the main use cases in the blockchain space? Are okay, and what are the global applications? So so if you're a newbie, uh, you don't have to worry about it. We'll cover everything from scratch to the intermediate level at least, so that uh, once you will go from here, you will have a complete understanding about what blockchain is, okay, and how you can how you can make sure that you can able to you know uh, actually qualify a use case inside your organization, okay, and you can address the concerns related to it. Okay? If somebody asks you something, so you should be able to you know make him clarify about it. Okay, moving forward, uh, this is a table of contents. Uh, as I told you, that we'll be covering from all the angles, like from the starting to the intermediate level at least. And uh, we'll start about the introduction and mechanics of blockchain. Uh, what are the smart contracts and what is uh, how it works? Okay, what are the different platforms of blockchain? Uh, what is blockchain for enterprise? Uh, what what is blockchain versus GDBR and uh, versus database? How we can how we can classify it? Then we'll explore the use cases. Okay, then we'll uh, we'll end with the global adaptation of blockchain. Okay, so before I tell you that uh, what is blockchain, uh, let me just 
tell you that why we are using blockchain okay? because this is very important to understand what is blockchain we need to also understand why we need to use blockchain okay uh, we can see that there are any you know, uh, in every organization there are very diverse blockchain okay which drives blockchain then there are multi party collaboration that we can see that in every in every exchange of business value we are being we are being you know uh, used to have multi parties with us even if we are even if we are using a supplier procurement model we use multi party collaborations then there are some process which needs to be optimized that usually process takes so much time to you know uh, you know process information and to pick up something you need to wait for some approvals and then there is bureaucracy involved in this all of this leads to time delays okay then we have security issues that the device or the database that we are using is not truly secure or having single point of failure so uh, and then there is transparency or an auditability that uh, once we once we are having uh, once we are having our records and if uh, any, any third party wants to wants to inquire those records will be uh, we need a transparent system and we need a proper auditability of our records but then the immutable digital assets that if we have any assets it should not be tampered okay so this is all uh, uh, these are all the factors which contributes to you know actually having uh, having the blockchain in our uh, in our platform okay uh, so this is just a brief overview about the evolution of the blockchain that uh, blockchain started in 2009 with blockchain 1.0 uh, with bitcoin okay it was just a ledger and it was used to you know exchange uh, exchange monetary value actually a lot of people confuse uh, blockchain uh, with bitcoin and earlier they understood uh, they were thinking that bitcoin is same as as blockchain but actually bitcoin is just application or just a platform you can say a platform of blockchain you know the platform of blockchain okay so as we are going towards 2018 and onwards we see that blockchain is keep on evolving okay first we were having bitcoin which were having some limitation in the transaction speed which was having a score to six transaction per second whereas uh, you know, if you compare if you compare other application in this space okay it is having more transaction per second speed and also uh, the programming language with, which bitcoin was using is not cannot be customized it's not turing complete okay i'll i'll uh, you can you can mark this word i'll, I'll just explain this turing complete for the turing complete is in my upcoming slides okay then we evolved to ethereum ethereum says that with ethereum we started smart contracts okay then the i mean the programming language which we use in ethereum is already so it provides more customization and we can insert tools as for our liking but still what we are having is that we were having the transaction speed very less okay but see if you compare the transaction speed with credit card let's say that if you are having if you are changing the exchanging monetary value and if you compare the same thing the number does like the credit card transaction the credit card transaction are like 10000 transactions per second or even higher so we need to have a system in which then if you need to scale it it should be compatible with it, okay so therefore as we are moving towards 2018 there are i mean the data space is also evolving okay now there is huge data storage which needs to be which we need to have if we need to you know have our solution okay then the transaction speed need to address then also there are so many attacks cyber security attacks that is been going on uh, on the platform so we need to you know see from each aspect that how we can improve further so now we are having in the phase of blockchain 3.0 which is us platforms and it is providing the decentralization applications in which once you will install that application uh, decentralized application in your platform all the services of blockchain you can have it okay so we are we are so, so as we are scaling towards blockchain we are we are growing further and this uh, is making global adaptations okay now let's dive in about what is blockchain we'll, uh, i'll give you a simple overview about it okay so as i told you that bitcoin is not blockchain okay as for the howard business review It's an architectural concept that offers an open distributed ledger that can record transactions between parties efficiently and in a verifiable and permanent way. Okay. Uh, actually, a lot of people cannot relate to this definition. Okay. So I need to explain you in a much better way. Okay. With so blockchain, blockchain. What is blockchain? Blockchain is actually I say that if I break down, it's a suite of distributed ledger technologies that can be programmed to track and record information of anything or value. Okay. so you would be thinking that okay we already have our system in place to have this thing okay why we need blockchain okay so why we need blockchain is that if we if we will about blockchain if we, if we go inside about what is inside about blockchain 
blockchain contains a ledger okay a entry of ledgers and blockchain is not two blocks or three blocks it's a chain of blocks which are arranged in a sequential order let's say that we are having 10 blocks 1 to 10 okay it comprises of blockchain okay we uh, the blockchain network we are having 10 blocks from 1 to 10 and if let's say that if we have to change anything in block number 2 okay so what do you do in the existing system that you you can just read write or update anything but in this uh, but in blockchain you cannot do it okay if anything you want to add you have to do that in the next block which is block 11 in our case okay indicating that x has changed to y on this time and he's the owner of that change okay so if you need to add anything you cannot go into the previous block and add something okay you have to add in the new block so this makes in blockchain very unique that the previous ledgers of our the, the previous entries of the ledgers will be secure and cannot be cannot be you know uh, or cannot be added i'll give you one example of this okay so let's say that if there's a dispute of land between two parties okay and they need to verify that who is the actual owner of that land okay but if that information will be on again if that information will be on blockchain they can easily go into the previous entries and see that how what the owners the how the ownership is being changed from owner to owner okay and if they need to verify the last owner they can verify from the last entry of the ledger that who is the current owner of the land okay so this will make the uh, uh, this will solve the dispute okay so this is what the beauty of blockchain the way it tracks and store data it's a non destructive way to track data chain over time okay now the second thing why blockchain is a game changer okay because by design blockchain is a decentralized and a distributed a distributed platform what i mean is that unlike our existing systems like database or we are or where we are storing the ledgers like the computers or from a database system are having single point of failure okay anybody can change if that administrator wants to change something in database they can change it okay but with blockchain we cannot change anything because it's decentralized the control is distributed into several parties okay so this makes what blockchain tamper to prove that you cannot change anything into the blockchain okay this is reason number two okay now another thing before we added something to the blockchain we need to have three steps done okay we cannot just add anything into the ledger or into the blockchain we need to go through three steps okay i'll just describe these three uh, what these three steps are okay okay the first step that if let's say that if let's say that ls has sends five bitcoins to bob okay so there's a guy whose name is miner okay he will validate that transaction that whether whether ls has five bitcoins on his wallet or on his on his system or not okay then he needs to verify or he needs to solve a cryptographic puzzle okay what is cryptographic puzzle and what is this validation process i'm going to cover in the coming slides okay, so don't uh, so don't worry about it, okay but he needs to validate the transaction and solve a cryptographic puzzle okay if he validates successfully and solve that puzzle successfully he he published that solution to all of the nodes okay then all of the nodes what they will do is that they will verify that that what the miner has done is right or not okay so so imagine if there are 10 million nodes involved okay and if there is one miner who actually solved that puzzle validate the block successfully he published the solution to all of the nodes to actually verify that what he has done is right or not okay so once the solution is being verified by 51 percent or more of the nodes then it can only publish into the blockchain network okay this 51 percent is called proof of work okay like so this we go we uh, we're going to cover in the upcoming slides so just imagine that if something is on blockchain it it involves so much computational power so much uh, so much validators that you know we can ensure that uh, we can you know assume that this transaction is trustworthy okay and and we can trust if something is on blockchain we can trust that thing okay so now you can imagine that if you are i'll give you one example so this actually the, the this trust mechanism uh, actually allow us to remove the third parties or the or the intermediaries i'll give you an example okay let's say that if you are going to exchange a monetary value okay or if you want to you know uh, sale a piece of land 
normally what you do you do you know all the bank okay or you involve a broker into that dealership into that deal what it does is that it actually removes the risk okay but at the same time the bank or the broker will charge you money okay and it will be time consuming okay but if that information if you can directly interact with that information in blockchain you can assume that this information is 100% correct because it has been validated by so many parties okay so this will make so this will allow us to remove the third parties and that is where blockchain is a game changer what i can say that actually uh, i sometimes tell to my students that uh, what internet has done in the year 1994 till this day okay blockchain is going to do the same okay as it is evolving more the more you know the world is getting used to uh, its you know beauty and its what it brings to the picture okay so now i'll just i'll just give you a brief overview of that what i mean what i just explained okay so let's say if a person is living in mexico he needs to send 200 dollars to the person b in australia okay normally if we are having a third party like a bank bank normally deducts 5% of of the money which is 30 dollars in this case and it will take normally 3 to 5 days okay but if we going to implement on the blockchain it can be it can go instantaneously and the amount of deduction will be very less okay so this is a very good thing when it comes to transaction okay then blockchain is an open ledger technology what do you mean by or what i mean by open ledger okay open ledger is mean that every person in the network is having a copy of the ledger okay there is no single authority that can keep a copy of the ledger okay let's say that if a has 10 dollars he starts me 5 dollars to b okay uh, then b is transferring 3 dollars to person c okay then c is transferring 1 dollar to person d okay here is a ledger everyone can see that ledger okay now if a will transfer 10 dollars to person d actually this is incorrect why because a has already sent 5 dollars to person b now a has left with only 5 dollars okay so this transaction will not be validated okay as you can see over here okay why because somebody in the blockchain network can know that okay the the person a has only 5 dollars okay so uh, with open ledger you can also you know have this analogy that uh, once you are having a whatsapp conversation with having a lot of uh, will having a whatsapp group okay once you type something anybody can have that information saved in a phone okay so so it's an open ledger thing okay so this is how you can you know relate this open ledger technology yeah so now the other thing is that it is decentralized decentralized means that there is no central party which is controlling that uh, what is will which is controlling that ledger in this case node a and node c is having a copy of the ledger all the parties are having a copy of this okay moving forward okay uh, it involves consensus process okay we just described earlier in the previous, uh, in the previous slide that consensus means validation and and solving a cryptographic puzzle okay and if that puzzle the solution of that puzzle is being validated by all the nodes then it involves consensus uh, it, you know uh, it tell us consensus okay so let's say that b is transferring uh, 2 dollars node b but b is only having 2 dollars so if he needs to transfer 3 dollars it will not be validated node c can easily uh, validate that b is not having that sufficient amount of money and uh, okay there is one thing i just need to explain you that uh, once node c will validate uh, node b okay that he is able to you know uh, he is having that certain amount of money or not he is also validate the signature that whether node b is allowed is is authorized to send that 2 dollars or not okay so with validation now now you verify that how much amount it has that if he if he is the original party who sending the money and also with respect to the mining uh, with respect to the cryptographic puzzle which i'll explain you these all the things node c will do okay so he will make sure that uh, all the network should you know accept the solution so in the summary what we learned is that blockchain is not a bitcoin it's an open and public ledger okay then there are nodes and miners who actually validate the stuff and and publish the network then there is consensus process which all the networks actually validate that whether the miner has actually has a correct solution of that of that mining okay 
and it is appendable. You cannot change anything to the previous block. If you have to add something, you have to add into the new block. Okay. So this is what block chain is. And who is Satoshi Nakamoto? Uh, now this is your one assignment that you have to go and you know find out that question. Okay. Okay. Now let's talk about the mechanics of blockchain. What are the mechanics? If you will, if you have to assume that what is inside the blockchain, you will see that blockchain contains 25 lines or 25 entries of ledger. Once once a block reaches our 25 entries of ledger, it is it is going to validate. Okay, if you have no, if you are, yeah, if you are having 24 or 23 transactions, you will not be able to validate that block. Okay, so this is how it is. Okay, uh, and it belongs to, to the hash. Actually, I'm going to talk about in the next slide. Okay, how blocks are chained. Actually, if you will see the block, what what is the data inside the block? The 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 actually the data inside the block is transaction data. Which is the ledgers or which are which are the transaction values? The previous hash, the block contains the hash of the previous block, okay, and the subsequent hash of the block, which is the output. After after hashing this, after hashing the transaction data and the previous hash, you will get an output of a hash value. Okay, so this is how the blocks are chained. So imagine that if you change something, then if you have uh, this transaction value, let's tell you, if you're having this transaction value. And, and by mistake, or if there's any chance of attack, if a gentleman uh, did something in the transaction data, okay, this hash value will going to be changed. Okay, so once this hash value will be changed, this hash value will also be changed. So the chain will be break. Okay, the chain will not be the same, and it will be it will be broken. Okay, so so the network can easily detect that okay, there's something happened in the blockchain network which is changing or in or there is some malware, or there is some, uh, or there is some hacker who is actually tampering the data. So it can easily detect it. Okay. Now, cryptographic hashes is unique. After this, you know that we are using public cryptography uh, in the blockchains, which is more public and private key. So, how block is mined? Okay. Yeah, this is very important to note. Also, that how the block is mined. I have uh, in the previous slide, I have tell you about the validation process of the the person who is going to mine the block verify the transaction history and verify the signatures but in addition to this we also randomly guess okay uh, we discussed earlier about a cryptographic puzzle okay so if you notice that over here there's a random nonce value okay so anybody who needs to solve the cryptographic puzzle needs to randomly guess the values until and unless the I mean the output of the hash have uh, seven initial zeros, which is in this case a difficulty level set. Okay. In the previous, in the previous, uh, or in the first picture, you can see that the, you can see that the difficulty level is only is only starting four zeros. Okay. But in the second picture, it is it is seven zeros. So it depends on the network that what difficulty level you need to keep. It can be four zeros, seven zeros, or or ten zeros. Really anything as for the as for the mutual agreement, okay. So if the miner uh, actually gets a random bounds which makes the seven zeros initially, it is now it can solve the puzzle. So this is how the puzzle is solved, okay. But you need to have a hash value which is having initial zeros, okay. Once you will have this nonce, okay, you will publish that nonce to the whole network, okay, to verify that puzzle. So this is how you actually solve the puzzle and do the mining, okay. So this is one example. Uh, moving forward. Okay. Now, types of blockchain. Uh, if you are uh, new to the blockchain, you must be thinking that uh, blockchain is only uh, 1.0 and, and then there's only Bitcoin and Ethereum. Okay. But as a real scenario, uh, blockchain, there are different types of blockchain. Okay. It depends on what sort of use case you're, you're going to solve so that you have to know that. Which blockchain you can use here, okay? But so 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 I'll explain you clearly that what are the different types of blockchain are, and what are the use cases and examples so that you can relate to it and have a good understanding. Of it. Okay. Now, with public blockchain, anybody in the world can do the following three things. Number one, it can read the source code. Okay. 
public blockchains by default are open source okay so anybody in the world can be the source code okay it can see the number of transactions okay since it's a public uh, it's a public blockchain you can see the transactions also okay the third point is that you can participate in the mining process okay so these are third things these are the three things which public blockchain contains okay the examples are cryptocurrency exchange that if you are having a bitcoin platform you, you can see the transaction you can even participate in the mining you, you can you know do everything what you okay so, but the problem of this public blockchain is that if you need to uh, use that in a private scenario or uh, or within enterprise or within within particular sector okay you have to have some sort of access policy mechanism to be able to allow only some set of participants who are your employees or whom you can trust okay so that your confidential data cannot be exploited okay so this is why we need other type of blockchain that we need to scale the things with ethereum and blockchain with public blockchains there is a matter of confidentiality okay there is a matter of that we need we don't need to share our ip information to anyone okay the second type of blockchain is consortium blockchain okay what is consortium blockchain actually it's a predefined set of nodes the users with access to write and data or block in trade finance use case the consortium may be participating banks custom officials example ripple and arc okay good about it is it is actually if you want to uh, have a blockchain solution in a very good large group of industries let's say that if you having a if you are looking uh, in after a bank and in which you need to deploy a bank uh, a blockchain solution on both banks so you need to have a complete ecosystem of the bank or even the fintechs you need to have all the fintech players into one ecosystem and you know distributed across the network in order to you know have the solution implemented so how you can implement if you don't have a whole group of companies actually with consortium blockchain we are having 70 companies who are jointly working to enforce such policies such as okay such solutions for the use cases okay so the most uh, the, Actually, banks and fintechs are mostly using consortium blockchains, and it it involves a number of large companies, which Microsoft, IBM, you know. So once you want to scale blockchain in a huge group of companies uh, or huge group of you know subsets, then you have to do the consortium blockchain thing because you have to have the consensus and everyone you know can import certain things. Now the third type of blockchain is private blockchain. Private blockchain is actually related to enterprise. Okay, if you are working in a the enterprise environment and you you need to you know have a use case for this so you can use private blockchain normal examples of proper like the blockchain art order and have ledger fabric and with have ledger fabric which has been mostly used in uh, and involves a good access mechanism and it involves a good consensus process okay uh, and we'll talk about the different blockchain platforms in the next slides okay now okay just to give you a bit uh, overview about uh, what is public and private blockchain okay to understand further about about Uh, this public and private, you need know, to actually understand the difference because uh, okay, if you want to use a particular set of blockchain, you need to understand that what is uh, what is public and private. Okay, so with public blockchain, okay, anyone again, as I explained you already earlier, that anyone can read write the data. Okay, but it is low scalable. Okay, low scalable means that then uh, if you want to add a new network or uh, sorry, if you want to add a new node into the chain, okay. It is slightly time uh, it is slightly time consuming because why? Because the transaction per second, the rate is not that much. Okay, so, but however, it is more secure. So you have to have a trade off that that what sort of what sort of platform you need. You need to have a secure platform, or you need to have a greater a greater a greater transaction speed. Okay, then there is permission uh, 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 blockchain also within the public space. It can allow that anyone can read and write, but uh, Only certain uh, only certain participants can write and comment. Okay, then we have private blockchain who which are highly scalable. Okay, only authorized participants can join and read and write. Okay, and it is it is very highly scalable because it is using a uh, it use a validation process which is which is confined to the organization. Okay, let's say that if I'm if I'm a telco company. Okay, and if there is a reconciliation thing which I need to solve. Okay, and in which I need to use a private blockchain solution. Okay. So what I'll do is that I'll make sure that the validator or the consensus people are the ones who are the guys or who know the technology who can do this thing. Okay. So it is so actually it is totally up to me that while using private blockchain, what sort of design I can keep. Okay.
okay but it is still it is still very useful to know this information to be to be able to you know actually use a different blockchain for different platform you need to explain it better or understand it better okay uh, there are actually three types of blockchain transactions one is the exchange of the monetary value which is cryptocurrency which you all know okay then there is Uh, the second type of transaction is that two or more parties but no exchange of monetary values such as a bank medical records or payment services okay they are not exchanging any uh, okay they are not exchanging any monetary value but they are exchanging information okay which are enforced through smart contracts uh, we'll talk about smart contracts in the in the upcoming slide okay so you will have a clear understanding about it then the third type of transaction is that if i'm only announcing some event into the blockchain Okay, I'm not again. I'm not interacting with any second party or any third party. I'm just updating my thing. Example of this is like if I'm a supply chain. Okay, I'm just updating my supply chain into the into the ledger that how many how many items I'm 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 I'm, I'm, uh, actually I'm supplying. So so this is one of the transactions of blockchain. Okay, so blockchain normally is being used in three set of different transactions. Here you can see that the first transaction is. In, is exchange of the bitcoin and second is enforcement of the smart contracts okay now what is a smart contract you must have heard that the smart contract the blockchain is is about smart contracts is about automation but what is exactly is a smart contract okay uh, to be honest uh, i'll not consider it a smart contract it's just a contract is it actually is just a code okay which when receive a transaction Okay, it runs it. Okay, the actually the person who is actually having this code on the system he actually runs that code once the transaction is being received. Okay, and then it updates the ledger. Okay, this how smart contract works. If you want to understand, see one. Uh, I'll give you a very good example. Okay, see uh, if uh, to that uh, to that code actually having some sort of rules. Okay. and that rules will only be triggered once a predefined or a predefined set of condition are met okay it means that it depends on if iftd logic iftd logic is what if this then that okay so let's say that if alice is sending five bitcoins to bob okay and bob has a smart contract in which it is written that once bob will receive five bitcoins it will generate it will generate a digital contract or validation and it, and it will give to a set of validators okay so once bob receive five bitcoins okay it will give a digital contract to a validators okay then what will validators the validators will sign off that contract and give it back to bob okay and in this again uh, and in the rules of smart contract it is written that once you will have a sign off contract you have you will release a shipment or you will Really, some funds. So you can see that the smart contract is having a set of rules, having a set of rules which, which triggers once a set of conditions are met. Okay. In this example, uh, you can see a buyer. It is sending some sort of ethers to Isco. Isco is a smart contract. Okay. So what what that smart contract is doing is asking a seller to give the shipment. Okay. Now once the shipment it receive and give back to the buyer then only it will then only it is releasing the fund okay here you can see that the once the condition is met that the once the shipment it, uh, once i'll get the amount i'll ask for the shipment okay and once i'll deliver that shipment then only i can release the fund so this is what for the smart contract is okay so what are the benefits of smart contracts it gives autonomy okay like smart contracts can be developed by anyone no need for intermediaries such as lawyers brokers it gives efficiency it will remove the process once it will remove third parties it will make the process efficient the the time uh, it, it, the time consumed will be very less okay it will save the cost you don't need to pay the cost of of these laws of these rules to any third party okay then there's a backup every node in the network can have a copy of the smart contract which it runs in the network okay so it gives you autonomy it gives you efficiency it gives you backup it, and it's a very good mechanism of cost saving now so this is the beauty of, of what smart contract is okay now you i, I believe that now you will have a good understanding of what smart contract is okay now okay now if you talk about 
blockchain addressing GDPR challenges. Uh, why we actually need that thing? That why we need to address GDPR? Actually, I must tell you that this is very important. Uh, if you need to scale blockchain, or if you're talking to some government officials that you know blockchain is a good use case for your problem, okay, you must make him understand that with blockchain you'll be able to address the GDPR challenges because you know, if you are you know, if you are familiar with the cybersecurity rules and regulations of every country, okay, you know that uh, the general data protection rules we need to comply with those rules, and if we are not complying, we can you know uh, we can be uh, have some lawsuits against us. Okay, so so somebody can sue us if we are not you know following the GDPR standards. Okay? So once we are talking about blockchain to someone, we need to make sure that we are addressing these things. What are the challenges? Rights of new data subjects. Okay, that are that the data subjects who are who are who are actually the owner of the data. Okay, their rights are protected. Their identity is protected. Okay, so we can have digital identity as service to OIC, in which people and malicious can use, share, and store the data safely, which can be enforced through private blockchain. Okay. Then the next is security of processing. We all know that blockchain uses cryptography to support protection of confidentiality. That if you are giving projections to anyone, it is encrypted form, and you are having some sort of and no one, no one unauthorized people can be able to use it because you have to digitally sign the projection once you are sending it. Okay, and it's not being placed in one place, so it is also being. Uh, cannot be subjected to any denial of service attacks or anything which is meant for only one uh, one implies mode. Okay, then you can have audit trails and traceability that if you if, if somebody needs to ask you your your trails that you know what set of you know if you are working on a, a crypto exchange you can have a full audit that if you begin you can have a uh, you track of all the reports and you can present that to the regulatory body. So this is how the data is secure. And then there is okay, then there is lawfulness and consent that blockchain can use to track and manage consent between data subject processes and controllers in case of healthcare. Now, uh, if you talk about healthcare, uh, you know that if you're using a centralized database, okay, everybody can see the patient information. All it is a digital system, but anybody with using while using centralized database, you can uh, in a physician can track records of all your of all your history, okay, and if then if it in if it more was test also, okay. So this is not a good thing that we need to ensure that we are being compliant. So okay, there's one compliance, HIPAA compliance, we can say that which are which are there for the healthcare sector. So which says that you don't need to tell the patient information. So the patient information needs to be anonymous, okay, and only certain parties can access and uh, only certain parties can access that information on the consent. Okay, so the patient in this case, the patient we can input the solution in which only after the patient consent we can give that information to anyone. Okay. Uh, then there's accountability of compliance using blockchain offers the opportunity to raise the level of accountability and insight in the data and to help a company prove compliance against specific regulation, food safety. Actually, food safety blockchain solution, which is which is implemented by Walmart, is a very good example of this. That uh, Walmart is using a list of supplies, okay. And which are which are being forced to to follow a certain compliance method once they are you know are supplying their products to Walmart. Okay, so you can have complete compliance when you are having a blockchain solution. Okay, then data protection by design and by default. You know that once uh, even if you are using a public blockchain, we are keeping the transaction anonymous. Okay, we are only keeping the transactions linked by public address. Okay, we are not keeping the name of the person. Okay. So we can and we can and we, we are also having encryption of the data. Okay. So when if you see about the, the what GDPR are, we know we can understand that how blockchain can be able to address these challenges. Okay. So this is uh, one of the examples so that and you need to you know understand this, you know, if you need to you know uh, actually ask some officials or to you know uh, or to lead some good discussion with the with some compliance and regulatory bodies. Okay, now there are different block, uh, blockchain platforms. Uh, you can uh, one is Bitcoin, which we discussed already. Then there is Ethereum. Then there is Hyperledger Fabric, and then there is R3 Cord. Okay, uh, which blockchain platform to use depends actually upon the challenges and the use case that what problems you are going to solve. Okay, every blockchain platform has their own advantages and disadvantages. Okay, let's say that the participation in the Ethereum is permissionless. Okay, like anybody can participate and anybody can. You know, uh, have the mining, but on the other hand, it provides ethers. It has 
its own cryptocurrency, which is Ether, which in case of Apple Ledger, there is no, you know, by default cryptocurrency. Okay, only tokens can be possible. Okay, whereas in case of Corda, if we say, if you talk about, if you talk about the consensus process, okay, it involves, it, it, it involves a node tree. Okay, for the privacy and scalability, it involves a certain sort of validator. Okay, so every blockchain. So if I am, I'm not going to. Uh, if we go into much details about this platform, it is we will can we can cover it in some other session. Okay, so uh, which platform platform to use? Normally, uh, the private blockchain we use have to fabric and have to be code. Why? Because this uh, these are the permission blockchains, and uh, and the consensus process we can limit to a certain set of validators. So in this way, we can actually uh, we can actually scale blockchain and where and involved in the and control privacy. Okay, so this is one of the blockchain platforms. Uh, okay, now there is a actually misconception about that. Some people think that okay, blockchain is a database, or while thinking blockchain, we normally think of a database system, but this is not the case. So you need to understand the difference exactly that how blockchain is differentiated from database. With database, it's a single point. There's a single point of failure. Okay, then if you talk about any, you know, any if the, the person, any if you are familiar with the cybersecurity rules and the attacks uh, which occurs and database system, you know that okay, there are SQL injection attacks which can comes from the from the HTML layer all the way towards MySQL base. Okay, so there's a single point of failure. Always there is a vulnerability in the database. Okay, and there is one administrator. Okay, that administrator. Can misuse the data and can you know or one you know uh, give someone access privileges which is which is not right okay whereas in case of blockchain you can have a you can have immutable ledger you know that you cannot change something okay the nodes are distributed the database is distributed across the nodes okay so you'll not have a single point of failure that, that there's no single party who is actually authorizing like in the case of database there is administrator. We're not having that party who's actually you know controlling uh, the blockchain system, okay? Okay, then it is append only. Uh, you can only append the new block. You can not you know do something in the previous block. Whereas in case of database, uh, you can edit the previous transactions and you can you know make easily the editing. Okay, then it involves peer to peer blockchain of peer to interact with the without the need of third party. Normally in case of database, we use third parties to actually save the information. Uh, so and even if you are using a cloud platform to you know store our things, okay, we we are using third parties to actually you know see our stuff. So which which is uh, which can be vulnerable, okay. So these are the main differences between the blockchain and the database. Uh, if you will see the things that where blockchain is suitable and where database is suitable, it actually uh, it only depends about what you want to achieve. Okay, if you want to achieve performance, like if you want to have a system which is which is having very good data speed okay fast it needs fast online transactions okay there is no enough verification that is needed and you have to do a lot of analytics into that data okay then you have to use database okay but however if you need to have a secure system it can be the information can be verifiable okay then there is decentralized apps that can build upon it it needs a you, you need to have a public cryptography, okay? Then block is a good fit, okay? So to be able to distinguish that, you need to have a clear comparison about what blockchain and database are, okay? Now, where blockchain fits for enterprise? I know that uh, you need to, uh, you get, most of you guys are having uh, are working in your organizations, and you will. Will be thinking okay if you are talking about Ethereum and um, and Bitcoin, but how we can make the use of it, and in where uh, in which areas we can make the use of it. So, so the first area is in which there is a complex paperwork and in, it involves cross border transaction. The complex paperwork, I mean that there are so many approvals that are needed. Okay, like uh, for this one actually. Uh, uh, Actually, Smart Dubai is a very good example of this. That what they have done recently is that uh, by 2020, they have a plan of becoming completely paperless. Okay, so uh, with blockchain, you can remove that thing, or you can you, you can remove that so many approvals. If you needing so many approvals, you can you can make the time very less, and you can remove that paperwork. Okay, 
and then the, the, actually the monetary value and if you are having cross border transaction then you with blockchain you can have instant transactions with uh, with you know very minimal deductions okay now there is reconciliations and regular distributions let's say that if you are having if, if, uh, if you are having from it background or from a telecommunication background you can see that there is a billing platforms in your in your organizations which involve the cdrs okay then there is a procurement supply models in which you are comparing the or you are reconciliation from the suppliers to the buyers and you know what are the what are the what are the values so with blockchain you can you know uh, remove the regular discrepancies okay then there is transaction that needs certainty and an audit log okay like uh, for this example if you are having a system or or if you are having a company which requires third parties to audit your 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 organization let's say that you have to have an an iso certification okay or if you have a tier line sound certification okay that your your company is following the standards so if you need to present them some logs or some uh, or some transaction you can do that with blockchain because blockchain keeps the or maintains the ledger from the origin okay so you can you know present them through then there is if there if you can see that there is a normal of third parties or regulators you can you know easily see that okay blocks from the root for you so these are all the areas in which you, you can you can capitalize while having blockchain okay now qualification of a blockchain use is where you know, if i know that okay uh, i know i can see that there is a challenge in which blockchain can solve it but you still need to qualify it or make sure that it is really qualifying so there are certain steps in which you can use okay that's my use case involve the database if no then you don't need a blockchain solution okay if yes then you need to further ask that will there be numerous users updating my db or there is only one user if one user then you can use a centralized db okay do the users need to trust each other if yes then you need to have a multiple or if you need to have problem caused by a central or third party then you can use blockchain if no then you can use multiple copies of a centralized thing so there are different checks which you can use to ensure that blockchain is a really good fit for you okay and these are different things which you can see that in order to you know make sure that uh, you really need blockchain because now you know you can see there's a world of disruption again okay? now uh, you, need, you can see that every now and then there's a new technology coming up okay so you need to really understand that do you really need a blockchain or your problem can be solved by some other technologies so let's say like a game so let's say ai or if you can use the master slave database okay so you need to you know evaluate in different aspects whether i need a blockchain solution or not okay so this is how you can do it okay the blockchain value realization uh, normally uh, we can see that there are two major needs or two major challenges where which blockchain address so we have we have categorized we have categorized six uh, we have made six categories into uh, from where the two major needs in uh, actually exist first is static registry okay like in case of line title or food safety the data is a static one okay you have to keep a track of that which you can implement how you can implement you can implement that while using a distributed database for storing and reference data you don't need a smart contract in this case okay there is also a misconception or thing that with blockchain we have to use every time smart contract we have to use every time distributed address it actually depends upon case to case okay look like in here you don't need a smart contract okay then if you talk about smart contracts once there is a set of conditions on the blockchain which needs automation okay which which would uh, which follows if this and then uh, okay which follows if this then that logic okay then you need to have smart contracts for example the insurance claim pay out cash equity trading new music rules okay if you are looking for a payment infrastructure you can you can use a dynamic distributed database that updates as cash or equity payments are made among participants examples cross border peer to peer payments so you can see in this in this slide you can easily see that in how you enforce blockchain depends upon uh, that that what sort of challenges you are going to solve some challenges need a complete distributed database with smart contract okay some challenges like in case of transactions or in case of record uh, record keeping you might not need a smart contract okay so it depends on how you want to you know uh, how you want to implement the blockchain solution okay now uh, now this will be going to give you a very good idea about how we can use blockchain this is a talk about the use case 
or supplier management model. Okay, so this will give you a very good understanding. Okay, before you actually jump into or dive into uh, this model, if you just think about that, what are the challenges that supplier management model has? Okay. I have listed down some of the challenges and improvement needed because to actually uh, make the use of blockchain, you have to first address or, uh, or see that what sort of challenges you are going to solve, whether those challenges need a blockchain or not. Okay, so the first challenge is the qualification. Difficult to ensure supplier identity, hard to discover quality supply. That there is, uh, actually we need, we are having a difficulty to actually qualify suppliers, okay, and the quality suppliers are missing. Then the validation that the a third parties which we are going to bring in, we cannot validate it. Okay, we we don't know that what sort of performance it has, or 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 you know we rely we usually rely to actually uh, actually approve a third party supplier. We actually rely on third parties to actually give us that supplies. Okay, and the supply information history is also not adequate. Then there is life cycle that once we okay, if we get here, if we actually approve one supplier but there are so many approvals or process which are needed which which increase which increase the which increase the kick off time okay so it involves so many processes involved and then the life cycle that if we are not having a complete uh, a complete insight of our suppliers we are not you know we cannot see the risk with it with third party or with that supplier brings in okay so we need to have a complete insight of that supplier then there is dynamic regulatory requirement that you know in the, in the supplier management model you need to keep on presenting your audit case to the regulatory bodies okay then there is a technology gap that if you need to integrate something with a legacy system okay or if we need to integrate a certain set of apis those uh, those uh, we are not supported okay so these are the challenges which we normally see in the supply chain management model okay and by the way uh, the solutions of which I am showing you now, and which I'll show you in the in the upcoming slide, we actually have those solutions in us. Okay, we actually, you know, uh, we actually specialize in the solution. So just in case that if you see that uh, you need to have a supplier management model within your organization, we can we can help you achieve that. Okay. Now, uh, why uh, once you have a look in your challenges, you need to set a clear objective that what you need to achieve and what sort of value proposition you need to have in your in your place. Okay, so you so that you will be focused and you will be stick to your task. Okay, you, you have to have to solve those challenges. You have to have a trusted source of supply information and digital identity. Okay, which can reduce cost. Okay, reduction in cost to onboard new supplies. Then this okay, then the cycle time will be reduced. That the, the reduction in the cycle time to onboard new supplies. Okay. Then it will create. Then it, the new system should create trust, increase trust that suppliers are certified. Okay, we'll should, we'll have a complete uh, look on that uh, on their capabilities. Okay, then we can you know we get able to mitigate the risk. Okay, and if you have validated supplier, this is normal that we'll be able to you know mitigate the risk. We'll have the complete insight. So this is what we're going to uh, what we're going to achieve. So the next phase is that we're going to. Uh, create a model okay so we just assume that if we can create or within it, if we use blockchain we can we can uh, make a distributed database and because uh, so and by the way this blockchain is a private blockchain okay so we have created with blockchain we have created a complete ecosystem for all our participants which involves buy procurement which involves a verifier which involves a trigger issuer auditor so that everyone who are involved in the eco chain of a supply chain model can be able to have an access of certain information which is being which is being which that person is supposed to have okay and it has within that within that distributed system or within that uh, within that uh, model we can have automated process through smart contracts okay and we can address all the challenges that we you know uh, that we face a blockchain supply can provide permission access to the regulatory compliance, okay, legal information to buy organization with decentralized organized uh, with decentralized organizational information so to provide data directly onto the blockchain. You can have verifiers such as GNB, QR, and certificate issuers such as ISO, diversity agency. So you can see that if you see from the supply perspective, I only have to provide my company info only once. He, he doesn't need to provide the information every time. Okay. From the buyer perspective, he has instant access to 360 degree 
pre verified onboarding supply information. Okay, then from the certificate issuer, I can verify originality of the certificate easily and build trust. Okay, so you can see that within this, you can import this model on the blockchain. From the buyer outcomes, you can have immediate access to suppliers with fraction of cost. Okay, the second time will, re will reduce to 70 to 70 to 90 percent, and we can onboard suppliers as per what we need. Okay, as per the demand. Then we can have accessible to permanent records or supply claims to improve audits. Okay, these are the things that buyers will be having it once they will have this solution. Okay, then there is supplier outcome. The supplier can have the reduced time to first transactions. Okay, if the process work is done fast, so they can have the first transaction very fast. Okay, then the true discovery of buyers on the network. That is, suppliers can have a complete list of buyers whom they want to approach. Okay. Eliminated redundant submission for the same info to different buyers. Okay, we can have a certain sort of rules in our smart contract that if the same information comes, you cannot process that information. Okay, so you can we can we can automate uh, you can automate that system as for our liking. Okay, so, so this is one of the examples that uh, and by the way, blockchain uh, the very good use case or the growing use case for the blockchain is in the supply chain industry. Okay, the supply chain we can do a lot of uh, we can do a lot of things that we. Uh, let me just show you. Okay. So the certain use case which I'm going to show you is the improving of education sector. Okay. So what are the challenges and improvement? What what we need? Okay. We need to have an unfair. Uh, okay. The okay the challenges that we are going to uh, we face is that there is an unfair admission policy. Okay, kindergarten school admission are not being available to students who belong to the same territorial space. Hence, the territorial priority is broken. Actually, this model is being implemented in Uzbekistan government. Okay, so this what I am showing you. We can also, you know, implement this. You need to want to uh, have some sort of solution like similar to this sort of. We can also you know, help you in developing that. Okay, so what are the challenges? There's unfair. This unfair admission policy. Actually, schools used to bribe the parents to actually pay the money to you know induct the student. And the school, uh, actually, the school are having more number of students than they actually uh, that, that they can they don't actually accommodate. Okay. So this is one of the challenges. Another challenge is that the schools are charging high high fees. Okay, the fees are non-regulated. Okay. Then once somebody is graduating from the school or let's say from the university. The certificate is not is being subjected to forgery, okay. And if he needs to, you know, verify that, uh, verify the validation, it takes normally 30 days in the paper-based process, okay. So these are the challenges that we're going to solve in the second use case, okay. So, so just to tell you, so I just told you in the previous slide that once you are having the challenges, we need to see the objective, right? what we need to, what we need to achieve, okay. We need to have a fair admission with digital validation. What it will do? It will have a fair admission. Children are admitted as per their territorial space on merit. Okay. The validation. For the validation standpoint, the certification validation are done on blockchain. So once it's done on blockchain, you can you know easily verify and you know uh, you can place or uh, or ensure that there is okay this validation is done correctly. Okay. Then this quick verification verification can be done using scanning QR code on runtime. So it will make the verification process very swift. Okay, then the fees can be regulated. Fees are regulated by the Education Commission. So we can have uh, some sort of not fee system into a block solution, which involves certain notary parties or certain, certain high high commission parties, which can actually validate that if there is an admission being is being taken, is it valid? Is it the standard fees which is being allowed? Okay. So uh, coming into the solution design, how we can implement the solution? Okay, the first step which we can do is that choose and apply to nearest school. Okay, parents can take the children apply to the nearest school. What school will do that in the second step, school accept or deny the child not knowing her name. Okay, uh, the list of accepted children along with fees goes to her authority. Then there is a list and fees signed and validated by authority smart contract. So, so, so in this way, once we receive a child, we can send his, by evaluating him, we can send his evaluation by not knowing her name and not and by taking a standard fees. Okay. And we can send that to the regulatory bodies who can actually validate that if the information which we are giving is correct or not. 
Okay, they have a certain rules in in place and which can move, which can enforce through smart contracts, and we can have a digital contract sign off from them. Once validated, then we can you know uh, have uh, have the process going. Okay, the sample interface here you can see in the top right, uh, there is an automated bot. Okay, uh, in which in which the, okay this interface is for the parents. Okay, they can uh, okay they are notified by a chat box for each step. About their child. Okay, then in the second step, we can have a school interface. They are used. Okay, they can use a portal in which your students based on fair queue, and parents can verify the process using the sign QR code. Okay, so these are the two interfaces that we can create to you know have this design. Okay, now how we can now the second challenge is that we going to face that how we can make sure that the certificates are valid and the certificate. the certificate validation process takes very less time okay once on the first step once uh, once the university has to issue a certificate it needs to send that it needs to send a request to a regulators okay which if that university exists in the list of universities which regulators has it will gives the private key to the university to actually sign you can see in the second step the university is signing that certificate and loading into the blockchain okay so loading the blockchain and the student how the student can see this details that using a blockchain explorer he can enter his date of birth okay and once it will have a date of birth entered we will get a we will get a copy of the certificate which is having his name okay so in this way you can have actually the certificate verification done on blockchain explorer and also it can be it can be verified using scan uh, using qr code okay so this is so, so just actually uh, giving you a recap that the, the first step education should be uh, the first step education solution ask permission to issue the certificate on blockchain through by receiving private key once they will ask the regulators they will give access to the private key then they can sign it okay in the second step uh, they can issue and sign load it onto the blockchain in this third step Verification can take place by private and government sector through date of birth and QR. Now, why we are using DOB because we cannot use the name because in some uh, in some cases we keep the name confidential and only the name can appear once you will enter the information correct. Okay. So this is one of the examples of second use case in which how we can uh, use blockchain, you know, to, to, to actually improve the education sector. Okay. Okay. now uh how blockchain is being embraced globally okay if you will see uh, the banks okay uh, the industrial and commercial bank of china file patents using blockchain technology to verify digital certificates instead of a trusted central authority here you can see there are number of players like ibm nasdaq jp morgan who are actually introduced blockchain in their system which means that the blockchain gain the sooner as the sooner that we can get the hold on on the blockchain technology the sooner we can learn and we can clarify our confusions the better the chance we can have to you know actually use that and you know keep a line with the world about how many of the world is progressing so we can so we have to be aligned with them okay so these are the different sectors you can see that where the blockchain are being used on the bank side okay uh, from the mainstream companies you can see the facebook is developing the cryptocurrency for whatsapp process okay Apple find a patent for blockchain technology to time stamp data. Actually, even Amazon Web Services has partnered with Kaleido to offer a full stack blockchain enterprise platform on the cloud that integrates blockchain services with AWS services. Okay, Walmart, Kroger, Nestle, Unilever, all of them are using blockchain to enhance their supply chain tracking. Okay, Samsung Electronics, Google. So as you are going, so if you can see the video. You you can have a clear understanding that the, this technology is is you know is evolving and as it is evolving, it is keeping its uh, so so all of the companies are you know once they are embarrassing, they can clearly see the outcome because if you are seeing the outcomes, then only you can scale it. Okay, so this is how it's being done globally. So it's a very good example so that you can be able to understand that you know blockchain how blockchain is being acceptance uh, is being global. and one example which i have not put here is example 
of smart dubai dubai is actually a very good example when it comes to you know implementation of the blockchain solution they have a blockchain center in place uh, within their government sectors and by 2021 they aim to you know have a complete paperless system within their within their you know uh, within their uh, for the government sectors by using blockchain and so it's been genius and there are so many initiatives which are uh, which the governments are taking okay even in the case okay now in the case we are having national transformation drives in which there is a clear stance of having a blockchain laboratories in our uh, in our city so as we are you know educating the people about the use of the blockchain how they can use blockchain as enterprise the you know the earlier we can you know uh, earlier we can embrace this technology so this is how the global acceptance is being done now uh what to do next how we can or what what is for you guys to learn and how you can grow uh because i told you that i am really actually representing also uh, but also boxing training alliance i am their activity instructor so uh, there's a clear global so boxing training alliance is a global body of providing boxing educations you can start with their foundation course then there is a solution architect program which is available so you can go to www.blockchainalliance.com and you can have a complete list of their courses and these are the body which are providing the global accreditation and their and their certification are being done through prometric centers which are recognized globally okay okay then we also provide customized workshops based on target audience okay like if say that okay, if you have a fintech community or if you are having a bank okay and if you need to educate your employees about blockchain give blockchain awareness and you know explore the use cases inside the banks you can also help to do do this and then there is a health and pharma sector real estate private sector so this is all our focus areas how we as a company are again for science and technology and also prudential solutions if you want to have uh, these courses done you can easily contact them and you know and we can you know help you in building uh, in exploring the use cases for you and we can have customized workshop and we can and without and along with this workshop and training we can also you know have your pilot projects done okay we also provide solution um, for example which i have uh, have just given you is just a clear indication about what we can you know give you so who to reach for blockchain solution government private use exploration customized workshop and training certification for in case in pakistan for pakistan you can reach to www.tutsol.com for case you can go to www.tutsol.com and here is my linkedin profile you know actually uh, in this presentation i might be you know uh, to discussing something very high level okay and you okay and it's a clear chance that, that you have missed out some information so my information so you can easily in touch with me uh, you can learn uh, on linkedin and follow me on hashtag kaha sajid hashtag credentials okay and you can have email address also in case you have any questions or something you can you know easily ask me and uh, okay for the details we give you a presentation copy also if you need to you know export further so this is how we can give you actually the actually the, uh, actually the, the main purpose of this presentation is to give you blockchain awareness okay and give you a clear understanding about how like how blockchain can be used in enterprises or, then how we can skill for this so you can easily contact me or my team if you need your team to be aware of this or if you need any personal training or something like this so you can you know you can easily approach us okay now for the question and answers uh please give me some questions so that you know i can see that how much understanding you have developed you know further you can you can easily email your questions to my email address which i have given you or you can contact zohair for this uh we have recorded this video uh and uh, we will be sharing the link with uh all of the attendees and for those who could not attend uh we will be sharing this link with those as well yes we will be sharing the link of the video okay this profession actually blockchain that if you see the use case for the target industry blockchain is not for one use case it is being you know uh, it can be for everyone so if you are a business leader or from even from it background or using or a, even a physician okay so blockchain are for it leaders for leadership for c level executive to actually understand because uh, the only way that you can you know enforce blockchain once you have a complete understanding okay and you can have a complete list of challenges in front of you so you can get it 
as long as you are working in enterprise organization, you can benefit from blockchain. Mr. Ibrahim Logmani have asked that how the exchanges hacked if blockchain is so secure. Okay, and this is a very good question. See, Ibrahim, uh, with blockchain, you know that we are having smart contracts in blockchain, and smart contracts are can sometimes be vulnerable. Okay, as blockchain is evolving, as I told you in my initial slide, that blockchain now we are having blockchain 3.0. Okay. And we are addressing all the shortcomings because it's still evolving. If you can see that it's only 10 years old, okay, from 2009 to 2019, okay. But okay, how the exchange are being hacked is being actually a different thing. But we are we are actually evolving and making sure that if there's any vulnerability in the smart contract which is being placed in the VM, okay, we are having smart contract audits and they are also also cybersecurity experts in place in the team to ensure that if you are having a or if you're implementing a solution in a secure, okay, and it should not be hacked. And if you want to explore it further, there's a good course of security professional in blockchain training alliance. You can have us uh, you you can have a look at how many how many hacks have been done in the uh, in the recent years and how they are being you know how we are getting it uh, our control and how we are uh, how we are you know controlling it now, okay. There is one question that I mentioned warehouse logistics planning field. How can apply blockchain concept? See this one. Uh, you have to see the challenges. What are the challenges you are having in your warehouse? Because from the challenges, we can prioritize that which challenges we can solve it. We cannot solve all the challenges. Maybe if we are having a blockchain solution and uh, would to, to actually solve a solution, okay, it will not be a good fit if there's a not good uh, okay, there's not a good trade-off. Okay, so we need to also understand that if this challenge is causing a problem, how much loss it can, be, uh, how much loss it is giving you. Okay, so that once we will implement a solution. So, so let's say that if your challenge is costing you like five million dollars, okay, and if you are creating a blockchain solution which will cost you ten million, so you know, so you have to see a trade-off. Okay, but if some challenges which is, which is very painful for you and blockchain, and we can implement the blockchain solution within our budget to solve this problem, then yeah, we can use blockchain. So as I told you that with warehouse logistics planning field is a very good use case for blockchain solutions. Okay, so if you are from a supply chain background or a supply chain professional, you can easily explore the blockchain challenges in your in your in your company, and we can help you in that phase also. Okay. Uh, I seriously actually want to thank you all. I want to thank uh, Zoheb and his team, Prudential Solutions, for them. I want to thank Blockchain Training Alliance also, and I would also need to thank the. the also need to thank Dr. Fahad, uh, who is the director of ASTC, who actually supported this course. And if anyone wants to wants to have the training inside KSA or inside Pakistan, uh, we we you know love to train you guys and give uh, and give give uh, and give good awareness. Okay, and if you want to have a solutions, okay, we can we can easily help you in that regard also. So we are we are open for collaborations also. You know, if you if you want to see because with block uh, with any pilot projects, there is a, there is an investment thing which uh, which needs to be in place. Okay, so we can also take place. So if you have a platform, good platform in which we can help you in fundraising things uh, by you know giving you STO and ICO things. So we are we are open for everything, and we can and you can you know uh, and we can collaborate on every front. Okay, so I really thank you all who participated in this webinar. And who are actually seeing this live on YouTube also? And if you need to, you know, further contact, you you you, you can easily follow me on LinkedIn. You will, you know, uh, share some good, uh, valuable insights of blockchain platforms. So yeah, thank you very much.